<laughs> no, no, this is good. All right, well, uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, while we're getting the slides up, um, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and she's becoming a, quite an artist. So I took a picture of her painting and put it in OpenSea. And um, I called her and said, hey, I, look, this is cool, something cool I did so that we can sell it for like tons of Ethereum and it'll be a college fund. And then she looked at it and said, Daddy, why would you sell my art on eBay? So you have a lot, long way to go. Um, it's, that's the message. But I'm here to talk, talk about the, the complex world of supply chain and where I think the role of NFT would be in the next five to 10 years. Uh, my name is Rajat Rajbandari, and let's see if this works. Here you go. So I want to start by, a, by an incident a couple of years ago. Um, this, was, this happened in China. It's a Qingdao port out of Shanghai. And um, there was a company that owns a very large warehouse at the port, and what they do is they store um, expensive raw materials, uh, silver, gold, and all that stuff. And the owner of the warehouse obviously had an invoice from his customers, and essentially he went to a bank and said, I've got this invoice of $140 million, and would you be able to loan me that $140 million? And the bank said, yes, cool, you have, you have a big warehouse, there's a ton of silver in there. Um, so you would have, it would have been fine, uh, but what he did was he went to another bank, showed the same paperwork, got another loan. He went to another bank, got another loan. So by the time he was done, he had uh, taken about $3 billion in loan using the same invoice. What do we call that? The problem of double spending, right? Um, eventually he was caught and he was sentenced to 23 years in jail. Um, but the idea is that in a, in a big scale, it doesn't happen that often, but in a smaller scale, in supply chain, this happens every day, like every month. And this is one of the reasons that the theft in supply chain in the global scale is, could, go, could go up to trillions of dollars. All right. So I'm going to very briefly in 30 seconds t tell you about the supply chain, the complexity, as a, as a consumer, you are always about the, the right side, which is the end product, and you have the left side, where it's all, it's all about the materials. But in the supply chain, you have all these intermediary steps in between um, that creates a lot of what we call a traditional digital assets. So for example, invoices, bills of lading, um, various kinds of certificates, the kind of invoice that I was talking about previously. And those are the things that we don't see as consumer, right? If you're not in the supply chain, you, you typically don't see these things. And these are all still, they're not material assets, but they're still, still assets. And what happens with those assets is um, those assets are aggregated. Those assets are divided into pieces. They're sold, they're resold to, to banks, to insurance companies in a huge scale, in billions of billions of dollars. Um, and one of the problems in supply chain when those assets are being sold and resold is what we call lemons problem. And you can look it up in Wikipedia. There's a nice article about it. The, ba the basic idea of lemons problem is that the seller has always has more information about that asset than the buyer. So the, the idea of, of the reason it takes so long for these assets to settle is that is that the buyer is always trying to do its research, its risk analysis, to tilt that fulcrum a little bit up towards its own favor. Um, so that lemons problem is actually came from buying used car, but it, it, it applies to lots of assets that are sold and resold, even art NFTs that we're talking about. Right, so how big is this problem? Is, is, if the global GDP is, is $90 trillion, Global supply chain is about 10% of the GDP, so we're talking about $9 trillion, so it's a $9 trillion problem. All right, so what is, what is the NFT? Right, so we, we know about ERC-20, which created the fungible token. We, we, we saw the ERC-721, which created this, this world of uh, NFTs. 
and there are more coming, more variations of ERC721 coming. But the most important part, part of NFT is, is the provenance, it's the identity, it's the anchoring of those metadata into the to blockchain, we, and then we, we share those attributes of the blockchain as, as immutable uh, and, and be able to track who created those assets into the blockchain, right? So that's, that's the essence of what we're trying to connect this, the ERC721 NFTs, to the traditional physical world of, of global supply chain. All right, so wouldn't it be nice if we can take all of those traditional digital assets or physical assets, paper assets, and turn it into NFTs, right? I think the NFTs will be a tool, right, a potential tool to solve a kind of a lemons problem for the buyers of those assets, right? And because NFTs provide that assurance of provenance. And this is a big hypothesis. It's not gonna happen tomorrow. It'll probably take a decade for this to, to even start uh, our cracking. Let's see. So, but to make this happen, when you go to enterprise world and talk about um, digitizing assets and putting them into blockchain and, and whatnot, a um, couple of things needs to happen, right? To, to get to that scale of, of enterprise adoption. So one is, is obviously the provenance. Right? And this is where we talk about the DIDs, the W3C standards of, of um, verifiable credentials and all that. Um, but the second problem is that um, it's, it needs to have a legal wrap around those assets and the NFTs. So if there's a fraud case and I wanna go to a court and say, hey, here's my NFT uh, with $100 million of invoice, and the judge looks at it and is like, what is this? I don't understand what, what you're talking about. Show me the paper. Right, so we still have that problem. And this is what I call, we need to have an enterprise grade NFTs for, for that kind of enterprise uh, adoption to happen. So these are the three projects that I'm working uh, with. Dextrade is my own startup. We do logistics. We convert uh, the invoices into NFTs and then turn to FTs and, and we uh, democratize the lending for inexpensive lending for trucking companies in US and Mexico. Uh, Roomsign is, is an is NFT marketplace. I advise them. Mobi is, is a global consortium of auto manufacturers. We have Ford, BMW, Honda, GM, Mazda, uh, um, insurance companies. They're, we're building standards for Web3 adoption, and obviously uh, we're going into a little bit of NFTs as well to, to solve some of the supply chain problems that we're talking about. Uh, you can find me in LinkedIn. That's my book. I published it two years ago. It talks about NFTs, and uh, I'll leave you with a quick note saying that whatever you all are doing with regards to NFTs, creating new protocols, different ERC versions, I think will ultimately lay a foundation for larger enterprise adoption in the next, next 10 years. Thank you all. Thank you, Rizat. Appreciate that very much.